Hi, I'm Gary Bettacher, and welcome to the Unit 6 Notes. In this particular video, we're going to be talking about how you can use functional dependencies to figure out the keys in a relation. This is a really important idea because one of the things we want to do is figure out, you know, what are the keys. Now, before we do that, we have to introduce a couple new terms here. And those terms are prime and non-prime attributes. And we say that an attribute is prime if it is part of any key. And an attribute is non-prime if it's not part of any key. So basically an attribute will fall into a category of being prime or non-prime. Well, let's take a look at a little example here. Here we have a relation R, A, B, C with functional dependencies A function determines B and B function determines C. Well, as you can see from this example, A is obviously the key. So we would say A is prime and B and C are non-prime. Now, in the event if A was a part of several different keys for whatever reason, then it would only show up one time. So in this case, we have R, A, B, C with an arity of three, and if you collectively add all the prime, non-prime attributes, they'll be three. Now, the next thing we want to do is figure out how to find keys in a relation based on functional dependencies. And believe it or not, it's really easy. Let me show you how to do that. What you do is you make this little table here. L is for left, M is for middle, R is for right. Okay? You go through the functional dependencies and you ask yourself the following question. Did the attribute only show up on the left-hand side of a functional dependency? Did it show up on the left or the right-hand side? Or did it only show up on the right-hand side? That's all you're going to ask. Well, let's go through it and see how it's done. Here's attribute A. It shows up on the left. Nowhere else. So we put in A here. Now we look at the B. The B showed up on the right-hand side of this functional dependency and it showed up on the left-hand side of this functional dependency. So we would put the B in the middle. And finally, let's take a look at the C. We find that the C only occurs on the right-hand side of the functional dependency. So in this case, we put the C there. So that's the mechanics. Now what do we do with this? Well, we have a couple little rules we're going to work with. If an attribute only occurs on the left-hand side of a functional dependency, it must be part of every key. If an attribute only shows up on the right-hand side, then it is not part of any key. Now the ones in the middle, they may or may not be part of a key, and we'll look at examples of how we go about figuring that. So, if we figure A closure, well, it's ABC, and so it includes all the attributes of R, we would know this is a key. Okay? Well, let's take a look at another example. Okay, in this little example here, We've got R, A, B, C, D. We also have A, B function determines C, C function determines B, and C function determines D. So, we, do, we draw a little table, left, middle, right. We go through attribute, one attribute at a time. So we see the A on the left. Okay, the B is on the left and it's also on the right, so it goes in the middle. The C is on the right, the C is on the left and the left, so that goes in the middle. And likewise the D goes on the right. So it looks like A might be a key. So let's try A closure. A closure well, by reflexivity, we have the A, and that's all we have. So, A, in this case, is not the key because it does not function determine all the attributes. Now, what we have to do 
is we try adding a B. So let's try A, B closure. Well, by reflexivity, we get the A, B. A, B function term is C. C function term is D. So, A, B is a key. Now, here's one little thing you have to be careful of. We tried A with the B. We also have to try the left-hand side with the other middle attribute. So we want to look at A, C, closure. Let's see what that does. Well, we know by reflexivity we're going to get the A, C. C function term is B, so we can add the B. C function term is D, so we add the D. So A, C closure is a, B, C, D, so therefore A, C is also a key. So in terms of our prime, non-prime attributes, we have the following. Prime attributes would be A, B, C, because these are part of one of the keys, and D is not part of any key, therefore it is non-prime. So far, so good. Let's take a look at even another example. Now, in this example here, we have R, A, B, C, A function determines B, B function determines C, and C function determines A. So we're going to have this little cycle going on. Now what we observe is A is on the left hand side, A is on the right hand side, A we go in the middle. B is on the right hand side, B is on the left hand side, B also we go in the middle, and finally C is on the right hand side, C is on the left hand side, C goes in the middle. Well, what do we see here? We see that A, B, C are all in the middle. There's no attributes on the left hand side and there's no attributes on the right hand side. Well, this is a really sticky situation. We can certainly work with it, but here's what we have to do. We have to try the attributes one at a time to see if they are key. And if that doesn't work, then we try permutations of all permutations of two at a time, all permutations of three to a kind, and so forth. So essentially we're doing a power set from the bottom up. So let's try a closure. Well, we know A to B, B to C. A, B, C is, you know, A function term is A, B, C, so A is a key. Now we need to try B closure. B closure also gives B to C, C to A, A, B, C. So B is a key. And finally, when we do C closure, we also get A, B, C. So A is a key, B is a key, and C is a key. Now what that leaves us in terms of prime and non-prime is the following. Prime attributes would be A, B, C. Non-prime is nothing. Okay? So it is possible to have all the attributes being prime and no attributes being non-prime. So, to sum up, here's, here's what we've done in our little video here. If an attribute is part of any key, it is prime. If it is not part of a key, any key, it is non-prime. And we've seen a little trick here to figure out the keys for a relation by using functional dependencies. If it occurs on the left hand side, it's going to be part of every key. If it occurs on the right hand side, it's not going to be a part of any key. And if it's in the middle, we have to figure out what to do. If there's no attributes on the left, but you have some in the middle, one or more of these will be a key and we have to try all these permutations. If we have, if we have some on the left, some in the middle, well we try these in the left hand side and they may or may not work and then at that point we might have to add one or more of these attributes in the middle. Okay, thanks a lot. Hope this helps.